welcome back to the Sensing Deep Space video log, episode four. Today, we're diving into the captivating art process with our special guest, Ben Hine. Ben is renowned all over the world for his mesmerizing audiovisual art, and we'll explore his background, the techniques that define his art, and get a glimpse into his upcoming plans for our Pandora's cluster installation. Let's get started. So Ben, before we dive into your upcoming work on the installation, could you tell us a little bit more about your background and the influences that define your work? Just a few more things about you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me, Nancy. I'm super excited to be on this project. Um, it's always exciting using such incredible data. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to explain a little bit about that in this vlog. Uh, so a bit of background on me. I actually started off my journey in the music world. You can see there's various musical instruments behind me. Um, I started out uh, playing piano, playing drums, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I went to college and uh, university, as we call it in Australia, for music. I, I haven't got any real formal training in the arts. But um, but yeah, I have master's degree in music composition, and that's that's sort of where I got my start in the arts, uh, learning how to write music for orchestras, chamber ensembles. I did some film scoring, that kind of thing. Um, but I started migrating over to the visual world after I was in London, and we were doing this series of immersive concerts, connecting uh, interesting venues, filling them with surround sound, adding um, visuals, projecting on the roofs and all sorts of things like that. And I sort of just started really wondering how to connect the visuals and the audio in a, in a really close way to have the the visuals reacting to the audio or generated from the audio or even having the audio react to the visuals. Uh, so that led me to learn this whole like coding, real-time coding paradigm and to get into the world of generative audio visual art. So, um, so that's a, a particular discipline that's really only become possible in the last five, 10 years or so um, because of how computing power has gotten. Um, but it's a system where you're creating visuals that instead of being uh, fixed to a timeline or pre-rendered, you're rendering everything in real time, generating the visuals on the spot. And um, obviously that means that there's a whole different skill set that's involved, a different learning, a different workflow, using a lot of coding, a lot of node-based workflows to create this kind of stuff. Um, but what the great thing about uh, generative art is, is that you can add interaction and you can add all sorts of elements. If, if the visuals are being generated in real time, that means you can have them directly connected to the music. You can press a note on a keyboard and have the whole room light up in color. You can do all sorts of things. You can bring, bring real time data in. I've worked on installations bringing weather data in. So you've got an installation that reacts when it's raining, when it's sunny. Um, you can, yeah, bring all sorts of things in. Human interaction is a big thing with touch screens and depth cameras. And there's just a whole lot of different ways that you can make the art more immersive, um, more all-encompassing. And so that that is sort of what I've been studying for the past five years or so is, is creating these, these generative installations. So, yeah, that's what I do. That is really, really incredible. And I know that that is actually what you have planned for this project as well. And I think we all know that being able to go in there and actually touch and change things is an incredible way to experience something. And, um, and you know, I know that that's also an important mode for learning for a lot of people as well is to, is to just kind of go in there and touch it and see what happens. So that that is really, really cool. And we are so lucky to have you. So do you wanna dive a little bit more into what your upcoming plans are for this particular Pandora's cluster installation? And, and what do you want the audience to leave with after they have actually experienced it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, yeah, as I said before, super excited about this project. Um, it's got a great starting point. We've got incredible data on this one galaxy cluster called Pandora's Cluster. And we've got data from the James Webb Space Telescope, Chandra, X-ray arrays. Um, I think there's some Hubble data in there. We've got um, some astrophysicists have, have done some analysis on the data for us so we can explore 
the magnification and the gravitational lensing that has occurred in these images. Um, so that is that is the starting point that I'm taking, and that's a really incredible place to start. Just uh, fascinating, fascinating data. I've learned so much about the universe just from working on this installation. Um, but so so my plan is to take this data and to translate it um, into into a very interesting installation that that can sort of surround people with give them the feeling of of exploring space through this data that we get because obviously we have these great incredible telescopes that that get optical data essentially well electromagnetic radiation data about our universe and then we translate that um into like understanding about our universe so uh, I always use this as an example, but when we, we see an area where there's a whole lot of x-rays clustered and we're getting a lot of x-ray electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum from that area, we know, oh, there's some super hot plasma here. It's burning in so, uh, so a higher frequency that we can't really see it with our physical eyes, but with our x-ray sensors, we can detect this super hot gas, gas and plasma that's burning like that. And so this is what I really want people to take away from the installation. So that, that there's a connection between the raw data as we get it, which is just light of different spectrums that we're receiving from the, the, far, the far galaxies far away from us. And that we, we learn things about our universe through this. We learn the types of matter that are in that area. We learn the age of different galaxy clusters. We learn the distance. We learn... Um, we learn lots of things about how the light is bent around different stars and galaxies. And all of these things uh, are translated from the raw data into our understanding. And so I want to mirror that process in the installation. So we've got the data on a touchscreen monitor that you can access. You can bring different data sets in, control how much they influence the installation. And then on the walls around you, on these big projection screens, you'll be able to see the kind an artistic representation of that data being transformed so if you pull up the x-ray data you can move through the x-ray data and you can see oh this area i can see there's a whole lot of plasma coming through on these visuals and this is going to be uh reflected in the audio too we're going to have surround sound set up in the room and and you'll be able to move this data through different artistic transformations so like you might want to hear what that plasma sounds like as you move through this this field of data you can hear areas where there's more of this plasma sound coming through or you could move it into the visual domain and see areas or you could be looking at physical gas that we can see with our our eyes or the magnification of certain areas the the bending of the light and that's all going to be translated into this like immersive experience and and hopefully people will be able to go in there, explore and have a better understanding of how we take this raw data about our, uh, our universe and translate that into understanding about what's out there, what it means, physics, uh, physical matter, all of those kind of great things. So, so we've been talking in some of the previous video logs about how, how there are more and more times when we have these giant data sets that are coming off for all sorts of different purposes, things that we're, we're assessing as humans and our need to be able to access that information requires a transformation of some sort. What I think is really interesting about how you're actually using the arts to allow this transformation of the scientific data is it will not only give perhaps your um, your average citizen who knows maybe a little less about space an opportunity to really experience it and understand it, but who knows, we may actually help a, a scientist who feels already very much engaged in this kind of data and work to discover something new about the data. So. Uh, I'm re I am very much looking forward to this transformation and what it's all going to look like in, in, for, from your perspective, what do you think are some of the greatest challenges that you think will happen? And then what might be some of either the easier things or the exciting things that, uh, you are anticipating from, from going through this whole process to create this artwork? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the main things 
it that is a big challenge, but not like a problematic challenge, more of a, a fun challenge is is staying true to the science while creating highly impactful art. And and as you mentioned, the the possibility that like that a, a scientist might might encounter this installation and, and see something new. That's something that I really want to leave open in this installation. Like I, I don't want it to be uh like too abstracted from the pure science. Like as a standpoint for my data transformations, I'm taking the data and and literally one to one changing, uh, taking it into a different aspect, into a visual aspect. So trying to retain like the integrity of the data without too much like smoke and mirrors, hand waving in the connection. So that this is this is what I'm really working on right now. And and it's a really interesting challenge because obviously I want to create a highly impactful artwork. Um, in my art style using using this data, but I don't want to really compromise the data. I want I want everything to be really connected, like have different elements be very clearly controlled by features in the data and and so that there is the possibility of people understanding a bit more about the universe. And and I don't know, I even if like the average person doesn't really grasp the um the full complexity, I think there is this this kind of grain to having everything really based on the actual data. And and you just, you understand the depth a lot better um, in, from my perspective, I, I think. So that's that's something that's a challenge. Um, obviously, uh, sonification of data and visualization of data are interesting challenges in and of themselves every time we do them. Um, especially the transformation into the musical realm is a, is a difficult one uh, because harshly analytical music tends to not sound very good. Um, music is often based on emotion, feeling, um, and, and it doesn't do too well when you try to have rigid systems interfering with it. Um, so something that I'm working on a lot in that area is um, using sound design as a tool uh, to to as a as a carrier for the data so as a vessel that the data can move through is is sound design because um when i've seen data transformed into the musical context um there's not much i don't think there's much to be gained from encoding like brightness of stars into frequencies of notes or something you don't end up with very good music that way but i feel like the sound design world our ears have a lot more tolerance within the sound design world for um, these more complex, grainy, data-driven experiences. Like if you imagine um, a distorted but still very tonal sound, there's a, there's a lot of detail you can pack in there. But as long as it's got that tonal center, we're like, oh, yeah, that just sounds like interesting noise that is detailed in the upper harmonics of the sound rather than Having, hearing a cacophony of different notes that represent different stars coming at you. So that's that's another very interesting um, area that I'm working on. Um, and then just making the whole thing look very good because I, I that's <laughs> that's one of the hardest things to do is just to make things look very good, still be driven by the data. And um, something that I find challenging too is like, like understanding the data purely. Like this the way that these uh, this optical data is transformed into understandings about our universe is very complex sometimes. And, and it takes me a while to wrap my head around. And um, yeah, hopefully by the end, I'll have a very, very clear view of how it all works, but I'm still, <laughs> still working through some aspects of that. Well, I don't envy you for having that task because I'm a biologist. And so one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to this installation is I think I have plenty of things to learn about the astronomy and the data principles and the technology that's being used to, to interpret these data and then something about how you transform them. And uh, it it's it's really it really is truly going to be an amazing achievement. So I, I just want to thank you very much for coming to talk today and sharing your background, your techniques, your, your plans for the audiovisual installation for Sensing Deep Space Pandora's Cluster. And it really is going to be a, a, 
a, an amazing blend of science and art that is truly a captivating experience and we're very much looking forward to it so thank you oh thank you I, it's, it's a pleasure to be on this project it's it's so exciting and i think that yeah as you said the final installation is going to be a very very big uh mind-blowing experience uh to have all this data all around you in the sound in the lighting in the projections it's going to be it's going to be a really great experience well thank you again and to our viewers please stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue our exploration of the art science fusion in the sensing deep space video log mm -hmm.